Alright uh, guys, I am back again. So today we have something new, something special. What is it? Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to mix from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to teach you all the basics about beat mixing, okay? Beat mixing, I'm sorry. So without further ado, let me go straight to the point. So first of all, what do you need to start mixing? Okay, so right now I have a beat. I didn't uh, produce this beat, okay? But a friend of mine made this beat. Uh, his name is uh, Lam on the beat. He's really cool guy. He's very talented. So what did I do first? First of all, he sent me the file, okay? So all the zip folder. So this zip folder contains everything that I need. Let me open it. So he has uh, the MP3 of the beat. And then uh, he has uh, the wave, which is the high quality uncompressed. And then we have the stems, all the stems. So I don't like, like a lot of times, because I'm still learning. So I don't like to be like somebody to send me a beat and then just produce my vocals on top of that beat. No, a good way to do what you want is to tell the producer to send you stems so that you will mix the beat according to your need because you know what kind of vocals are going there. So you put a lot of head drums or just, you know, the balance to be accurate, okay? So he sent me this. So I already, all you have to do, just highlight all of them. Control A or Command A, select all of them, and then drag and drop to your DAO. If it's FL Studio, Logic Pro, when I'm using Logic Pro, so that's the first step just drag and drop after that to make your job a little bit easier make sure you name and all your tracks appropriately as you can see right now i already did everything so i named every channel as you can see kick rim shakers conga shaker afro conga three conga central reverse Trams roll, crash, bass, etc. So after you name all your, um, all your uh, your instrumentals. So now it's time to, like, make sure you arrange them properly. That's gonna save you so much time. So in this case, uh, for me, I like putting all my drums on top because, uh, we, in this case, we don't have a lot of drums. It might be oh, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So only tracks for drum are seven, but all these instrumentals are a lot. So I like putting my drums on top. So you can approach however you want. You can put the drums in the middle and the other instrumentals on top. Just like that. All right, now let's go straight to our point. So after naming all your tracks appropriately just take your time guys then the second step we just make sure you arrange them properly and then sometimes you gotta color grade just color grade them you see they have some colors yeah that's good too to know which one is this which one which one is which which one is which okay now let's go to our job let's listen first <music> Yeah, so by the way, uh, these kind of beats are from uh, Africa. So, but uh, in this case, anyone, any kind of music, sometimes the music is a universal language. So no matter where it is from, you can still learn a lot of stuff. Okay, so the beat sounds good. There's nothing really wrong with it. There is something wrong, but not really wrong. We can still... um export these beats are mixed or um leveled and then people will still hear like oh this is fire it sounds good because majority of people the consumers they ain't got no te technical ears to hear what's wrong with the beat what's wrong with the music okay but if you are a producer mixing engineer or master engineer of course you will know what's wrong with the beat so first of all this beat listen again 
So um, the kick, it's not popping. It's not punching enough. Why? Because all these instrumentals are louder. And then some of them need to come down so that the kick and the drums should shine a little bit more than other instrumentals. Because in a beat, the most, the loudest part are the drums and then the bass and all those kind of stuff comes next. So what I like to approach my mixes is um, by putting all, all my tracks to like no volume at all. Now you can, okay. We are back. All right. So now if I play them, I hear nothing. You can hear nothing because everything I put it on. Uh, I don't know if it's zero. How many dBs are these? So I'll just put it all the way down that you can hear nothing. So after that, now I will start raising one by one. So that's called gain staging. So first step of mixing is gain staging. That's the most important part do not be skipping this part guys if you skip this part and you're still a beginner your mixes will always sound bad and you'll be asking yourself why is my mixing sound this bad because you are you are not gain staging gain staging makes a lot of sense okay so first of all i always start with my kicks so let's choose the most busiest part of the beat that a lot of instruments are playing it so i think this place right here yeah, so this place is the most busiest part where the drums, instrumentals, guitar, piano are playing together. So I like to start with my drums, specifically the kick, because the kick is the leader of the beat. The leader of a beat is the loudest thing. So my first channel here is the kick. So I'm going to raise it up. Let me play. So on this gig, what we have to do, I make sure that uh, I don't cross, I make sure I'm like on negative six, negative nine, you know, that I would have to clip afterward. Let's see the meters. Yeah, now we are on like negative six, but use your ears, use your ears first and then look at the meters. Because sometimes the meters may say, oh, this thing is too loud, but your ears, they didn't say so. Okay, after the kick, after I already got the appropriate balance of the kick, well, to go next are the snares and all, the, all those instrumentals. So in this case, the rims are the most important part in this beat. So I'm going to raise it up, not just raise it up, just play the beat and raise it up little by little. Let's listen. Right, just like that. Make sure you don't mix your beats like way too loud. Just make sure the volume is like in the middle. That's gonna be good so that your ears, you know, will know this one is too loud or we need to make it a little bit louder. So after that, we have shakers. This is the most important part too. So shakers don't have to be that loud, okay? And we have congers. Oh, I forgot one thing, guys. Make sure when you are mixing, put some, put it on mono. Just be sweeping around, playing with mono and stereo so that I, when something sounds in mono, they all say it will sound very good, much better in stereo. So I'm going to put this plug in. So if you are using another dough, just find a way. So this is called Serial Out Gain. Then just click here to put everything in mono. All right. 
we have more shakers afro And then we have conga. And then we have the conga central. There, there are a lot of congas in here. Now I have this kind of reverse, this is for drums, the reverse thing. All right. So reverse, I don't want it to be too louder. Now we have this drums roll. That's good. Now let's go for the crash. Yeah, the crash sounds good. Now, bass. This is the most important part too. Don't make it too loud. The bass has to be loud enough to be heard in this in the song, okay? So it has to be like a little bit down from the kick to the kick the loudest, then the bass down, like you know, smashing it. Yeah, that sound good. Let's go for the main melody. This is the leader. I'm gonna put this in uh, stereo because this thing is just uh, some magic melodic thing. gonna go for the best base for the intro so this one i can just copy the one previous right here okay i don't have to worry about that now we gotta go for the rhythm of the beat the main rhythm yeah I love this guys, this sounds so good. Now the next one is another rhythm, piano. The beat already sounds good, isn't it? So the next one is uh, a muted guitar. This one is fire. Just gonna raise it up. All right, uh, this is the muted guitar. It sounds so good, isn't it? I want this thing to stand up a little bit more than, than my rhythm. Mm -hmm. 
next we have the pad guys the pad are my most favorite lovely soulful thing in a beat let me show you what i mean by pad So guys, if you don't know anything about pad, so this is my advice to step up the game of your beat. So most of the time, if you want to add some feelings, some soulful, some soul to the beat, some emotions, guys, start using pad. Pad are really cool. They bring so much emotions, so many emotions, like a soul, as you can hear. As you can hear, I, I muted it like all oh, oh, this rhythm guitar. Now we can only hear the pad. So when I mute the pad, the beat has no soul, no emotions at all, just the grooves. But when it's activated, you can hear the soul, the, the, the emotions, the feelings. If you know what I'm talking about, okay? So I'm just gonna unmute all of them. So by the way, guys, do not skip this video because at the end or in the middle, I'll be giving tips that you cannot hear pretty much uh, like a lot of people are talking about, but they're really important from making good beats, okay? So after paired, we have the flute. I don't know. So guys, some instrumentals are really separated. So to hear them good, you need to activate the stereo. Just mute the mono output and then put it on stereo so that you can hear them really, really well. Like in this case. I messed that up. Now they say I cannot undo. Oh, okay, it's right here. So now we cannot hear this properly, but it's still there. If I mute it, the beat is still like, like something. All right, uh, so. Now I have the horn intro. This is the intro. It's gonna be a little louder, louder. So the reason why the intro instrumentals has to be that louder is because there'll be no vocals, there'll be nothing. So they'll be like the main lead of the entire intro, okay? So now we have the last, I mean, the, the last track is our outro. So this one has to be louder too because we'll be putting no vocals to the end. So these outro things, they have to be louder, just like the vocals, maybe a little bit down, but it has, it has to be louder so that uh, 
of this will be leading that outro, the melodic things and all those emotions packed in those melodies. So that's it, tips for ya. Don't put them like too low, no. Alright, so we done. Now let's listen our beat. I'm gonna put it on um stereo. So now, as you can hear, the kicks are popping a little bit more punchy. You know, this kind of song, you need a punchy kick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so the most important things when you are mixing a beat, okay? The first thing, write this down. If you don't have a pen or something, just write them in your head. But I bet you will forget them. So first thing, the first most important steps when mixing a beat is again staging okay so now i already skipped some other steps to let's say like naming all your channel that's really important and then arranging all your tracks that's really important too now let's talk about mixing in mixing the first the biggest important things is to make sure is to gain stage so what all we did in this um on this beat, we didn't put no effects, no nothing. We only gain stage, gain stage in it, okay? So everything has to sound right. Everything has to have its own volume where you want them to be. So some instrumentals have like common rules to almost every genre of the music. For example, the kick, the kick has to be The kick has to be more punchy, okay, in almost every genre of the music. Okay, so the kick has to have a lot of energy in almost every genre of the music. So that's the first, that's like a common rule that people have. So... That's the really important things about the gain staging. So we did nothing more, only gain staging. We did not pan any instrumental left or right. Everything is just as it was produced, okay? So gain staging, that's the first most important. So after gain staging, what do you do? Because right now we already finished. That was only gain staging, naming our channels, uh, putting some weird colors, as you can see. So what's next after gain staging? Right now the beat is ready. Now you can send the artist to the beat. Don't put them too loud. Don't master the beat when somebody's going to put the vocal on top of them. All you have to do is just mix them, gain stage them, send the beat or... Call the artist, come in your studio, sing, and then you add more stuff later after the vocals, okay? So that's the first most important. After gain staging, so now the beat is ready for somebody to put vocals on top of it. And now they will shine a little bit more because everything sounds balanced. But remember guys, don't, do not judge me. In music production or in production, videos, musics, there is no such thing as perfection. Even multi-platinums, producers, they still have, you can still listen to their records and say, oh, he could have done better on this instrumental, this one, or these vocals. So there's no such thing as perfection. Just do what is right to your ears. Your ears are the judge of what you are doing. Now your, e now your eyes, okay? So there's not, nothing as oh, perfection. So now, guys, now we're done. That's all you need to do, okay? So 
the last tip before we close this tutorial before we finish this tutorial this is really important you gotta write this down too if you are a producer a beginner intermediate or even advanced so there is something called tricks and tips and tricks okay and some people are spending way more much time mixing their beats you know why there is a reason behind it the reason is some producers when they are producing beat they are using the right or good sounding samples like in this case we did not spend so much time on trickling stuff you know why it's because these producer bro everything sounds good from the package Okay, so we did not spend so much time because this producers he chooses good sounding samples. So when you are making a beat and you don't want to spend more time mixing it, just playing with EQ, EQs, compressors, or whatever effects, make sure you choose the right samples, good sounding samples. Do not be choosing trashy sounding samples, or that's gonna make your job a lot hard, a lot harder, and sometimes they are unfixable. So what you have to do, the key is to choose the good already sounding samples. And then later on, you will thank me because you don't need any magic. You don't need any effects. We did not put any effects on our mixing but our mixing is sounding good because i'm telling you the producer that produced this beat he chose it, the very good sounding he chose the very good sounding samples so that's the key for making good beat and then not spend so much time on mixing it choose the right or the good sounding samples and then after that I just play with your instrumental all right guys so that's so uh, we done for today so what we learned is how to name your channel appropriately or let me list them like this so let's play a little bit of music okay so when you produce a beat okay or you got some um stems beat stems from another producer what you have to do a lot of times they don't write names or they don't arrange stuff like what you want them to to arrange okay so when you receive them, just drag and drop to your DAO. After that, just name all your tracks appropriately. Sometimes give them colors to be much easier for you to find what this is. Okay. So first thing, name your tracks. Second thing, arrange them appropriately according to groups put all the drums together if you put them to the bottom to the center to the front here it don't matter just make sure you group them together to know okay these are a part of drums and then everything else put them together as well all right i always put on um, my um all my drums after drums i put our bass as you can hear as you can see right here so that's really important okay guys so first thing name your tracks and then arrange them by grouping them according to their sound drums drums guitars pianos okay and the last thing gain stage that's the most important gain stage all the instrumental to make them sound balanced that's what we call balance balance your tracks make the kick sounds a lot punchy a lot um louder than all the all the instrumentals the bass has to be loud as well and all the rims percussions has to be louder okay so that's all the keys that you have to master guys it's really simple if you're if you're learning this um slow by slow just don't be in a rush when you're mixing just stay down take your hours learn from other people how they do how they approach their mixing and then when you adapt to that you'll be able to to like create your own new method that's gonna be maybe a lot better than what you are being shown here okay guys 
So for this tutorial we done, if you have any question, just make sure you drop it in the comment section below. And then for the next part, next video, we will learn how to put effects to achieve some kind of sounding that you are going to. So we already gain stage for the next video. I will teach you how to sound design. It's called sound designing. Okay, now you are designing your own sound to make your beat sound the way you want it to sound. Okay, so without wasting so much of your time, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you watch the next part to learn how to sound design, how to, to, to design your own sound, how to make the beat sound the way you want. Okay, without much talking, see you to the next video.